Okay, for this lesson, let's go ahead and finish off our project here and publish it. So we'll look at how we can build our project and some other options for the publishing end of things. Let's take a look at our buttons here. We wanted to assign some actions to them, remember, from the planning stage. So let's click on our Close Window button. We'll double-click it, and we're going to type in our actions manually for this. We're going to type in Application, and we'll use the Autocomplete dot, and we're going to type in Exit. Again, the Autocomplete is there, so we'll press return and then we'll just put in some brackets and a semicolon. Okay, so we've assigned an application exit action to our close window button. So let's press OK. Then on the visit website button we're going to double click and we're going to use our actions wizard this time. Let's right click in here and select add action. From the file category let's choose the action file open URL. We'll press next and then we'll type our website name instead of this one that it's got in there. So let's go indigorose.com. We'll press finish and it's added our action for us. It's created the action, file open URL, and created the proper syntax. So we'll press OK. Now when they click that button, it'll take them to our website. The final thing we're going to do here is add a paragraph object to take care of these three pages um, text here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the paragraph object. I'm going to cut and paste this text so that I have something for reference. We're actually not going to add any company text. We're just going to use this sample text. And I'm going to change the scroll bar style to charcoal because that's going to look snazzy with our orange. So I'll press OK. I'll pull this into place. And remember, leave some white space around it so we want to actually shrink it in the middle there a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty, pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that and I'm going to go with that. That looks kind of good. So our page here is basically complete, but before we duplicate it to create the other three pages, let's go ahead and add our page jump actions to the buttons so that they go with the buttons to the new page. So we'll double click on our introduction button and we will add an action by using this button now. I'm trying to do it as many different ways as possible so you can get a feel for it. And from the page area, let's select a jump, page jump action. Let's double click it and we're going to leave this on the page one default because this is our introduction button and now we'll select it with our mouse right click and choose copy alright now press OK and we're going to go ahead and double click on our new features button and again we'll right click in here but this time we'll select paste and we'll just change that number from page one to page two so our second bucket button will jump to page two and we're going to do the same thing for our third button except this time we're going to switch it to page three Okay, so now all we have to do is duplicate this page twice and we're actually set up. So let's go ahead, oops, it looks like something funny happened to our button here. Let's go ahead and correct that. Yeah, it got somehow shifted to the right and I'm not sure when I did that, but let's just go ahead and correct them manually for now. Okay, so there we go, our button is set back up. You have to be careful about that kind of stuff. That's what the pin uh, function is really great for, or the lock function. But in this case, I didn't lock them, so I accidentally moved that text. Okay, so now our project is basically done. We're just going to go through and change the text so that we can be 100% um, sure. So I'll put intro text on the first page. And I'm just going to cut and paste to create a whole bunch of text. All right, very simple. Page two we are going to put the new features text again I'm just pasting it by holding down control V and on page 3 we'll put the indigo rose text so we'll say company text again I'm just doing this to be fast you can go through and do more detailed stuff if you like and when we preview the project which is the last thing you do before you build always preview you'll see here that we're able to jump to and from each page and if we click the visit website button we get a browser set up with our website and if we close that and we click the close window button it's going to close our application so that's kind of cool again I'm just going to preview to show you the paragraph object this is a custom skin that we created to ship with the product you can actually create your own skin for the scroll bar you can see how smooth it scrolls 
It's really nice. And we basically created this nice little project in no time flat. And this is basically of the quality that most people would be proud to have for their company. So it's a great start. I hope you guys have um, learned something from producing that little project. Now let's go ahead and press the save button to save our project and we'll look at the build options here. We'll go to project, publish. That's F7 as a shortcut key. And we get a wizard here. So now we can build in a variety of formats. We can build to a hard drive folder, to a compressed executable, to a CD or CDRW, and to an ISO image. And if you read the description text underneath each one as you select it, it'll tell you what each one is. In this particular case, uh, we've got a option here to create a compressed executable. So let's take a look at that. It creates a compressed single file executable that's perfect for small projects. So that's us. Let's press next. And then we'll set up a uh, area to save our project to here. In this case, let's go to our desktop and let's save it as my file dot exe and if you want to show a progress window when it's loading you can go ahead and keep this checked since we have such a small project there's no sense so I'm going to uncheck it I'm going to press the build button and it's going to go through the process of collecting the fonts and the uh, folders and the files and it's going to assemble it all into a single executable now we have an option here to open the output folder when I close this so I'm going to go ahead and do that here we go. That opens our desktop, which is where I published to, and you'll see that there's a file there now called My File. Let's go ahead and look at our desktop, and let's go ahead and click on that file. As you can see, it ran pretty quick, and it's reliable. It's working perfectly. The web link works good. All the buttons work good, and it's good to go. And if we take a look at the file size here, it's all of 1.93 megs, almost big enough, to, almost small enough to fit on a floppy. So you can see that the files that it builds are quick and precise and small. So that's the build function, and I encourage you to go through the project publish process for each of these different ones and experiment with them to see what they do. For example, if you're going to be distributing a larger application on a CD or something, you're definitely going to want to look at the ISO image or CDR format more so than the compressed executable. If you're going to publish your um, uh, file for the web, for example, to be shared, the compressed executable option is nice because it creates one single file that you can just share. Um, if you're going to be burning it to a um, CD or something like that, you definitely want to go with this option for the CDR, CDRW. It's the fastest way to create a working CD application. So that's a touch on the building process of this and hopefully you guys have got a good grasp and you're ready to go out and, and uh, publish your projects.